When you look at me, standing here on this stage, you don't see anything special. Except maybe the new boots my husband did, didn't want me to buy. You see a woman in her late 20s that could use an extra hour of sleep. I could be the girl next door. I'm going to tell you a story. It's a story that fueled our dreams and ambitions and that took us on a detour to still make our dreams come true. My story is about strong beliefs and about following dreams. And it's about trusting yourself, listening to yourself in very sensitive matters. On the 23rd of April, 2010, the future we were dreaming of was challenged. We were, we'd been blessed with the birth of a healthy boy, and we as a family of five could take on the world. In the middle of the night, I woke up bleeding, and I was rushed to the hospital. I was reasonably relaxed when they brought me under narcosis, assuming it would be a quick fix and they would return me home to my family in no time. Things went wrong. I woke up at the ICU 15 hours later on life support, and my husband told me that my mother was on her way to be with me too. Heavily sedated, I couldn't understand all the fuss. I was alive, wasn't I? I felt like crap and I couldn't move without a lot of pain, but my mom didn't have to come all the way from Austria just to be with me. The next day, when the sedatives were off, they told me what had happened. I had been bleeding out of my uterus and they couldn't stop it. After 90 minutes, I was bleeding out faster than they could pump new blood in. And the anesthesiologist told the gynecologist, you have to do something now, because you don't, otherwise you don't have to do anything anymore. So they had one of the gynecologists rush to my husband asking his permission for a more invasive procedure. But before he returned, leaving my husband behind in despair, with our newborn on his arm, they had taken it out, the womb that had given me three beautiful children. When they told me what had happened on that dreadful 23rd of April, my world collapsed. What happened? How could this be? Why? Why me? We had been dreaming of a large family and now waking up at the ICU, they told me I had to, had to kiss goodbye to the future that we were dreaming of. In the weeks that followed, a lot of people told me, you should be thankful you already have three children. They meant it well, trying to make me feel better. But it didn't really make me feel better, instead it was painful to hear. It was like my grief over the dreams that we've lost was not allowed to exist. Was it not okay to mourn over dreams that were wiped away? A little later, when my body had recovered and we went back out there, the voice of people telling us to be thankful changed. They told us, you have to accept, you have to move on. Look at what you have instead of what you didn't have. Count your blessings. And griefing is neglecting your children. Was I really neglecting my children by showing them my tears? Or could griefing and counting my blessings go hand in hand? My hospitalization had showed my children that mothers are mortal too. I saw the fright in their eyes when I had a doctor's appointment. They had their part in this tragedy too. And it was my responsibility as their mother to help them feel all the emotions that they have and help them figure them out. And together, as a team of five, each member with their own pain and grief, we stood together and came out stronger. Being open about the dreams that we had also brought positive things. We came in contact with other people that had experienced life-changing events and were off offered a lot of support, understanding, and even new opportunities. We got at least four serious offers of people who would gladly carry a baby for us, women who would gladly carry a baby for us. After giving it a lot of thought, my husband and I decided that we would really like to take this opportunity to still make our dream come true. It just had, uh, it should not ask too much of the family we already had and the surrogate mother-to-be had to offer it out of love and compassion. So accepting the f one of the offers was step one to take. The next step was to find a clinic to help us with the IVF procedure. 
We hoped we'd be helped in the Netherlands, where the VU Medical Center is the only place that offers uh, gestational surrogacy as a treatment. Even though we met all of their criteria, they rejected us. Before we set foot in the clinic, they told us, you have three biological children already, so just accept your faith. We're not helping you. What? The hospital that selects on the number of children that you have? Rejected, not for medical reasons, but moral reasons? Is it up to the hospital, or society for that matter, to decide? Just because I'm missing a uterus, I'm not allowed to opt for a fourth child, even if we'd be paying all expenses ourselves? If we were missing vital eggs, or sperm, or if it just wouldn't happen in the bedroom, they'd be happy to have us over, and insurance would even pay for the treatment. After our rejection, the VU Medical Center made a new list of criteria. From now on, there's a maximum of one healthy biological child that you're allowed to have for them to help you. So if I, were have, uh, if I would come over with a new man and wish to have his child, they would help me. Now, how strange is that? <laughs> it is that I'm way too happy with my husband, but otherwise I might put down a list for volunteers at the entrance of this conference hall. Anyways, was this the end of our dream once more? Should we just count our blessings and let go of the dreams that we had? Or can we embrace possibilities that arise in our future? Gestational surrogacy was a great possibility, and we've come a long way. This summer we did an IVF procedure, and, and we had a marvelous result. 16 eggs were harvested in Riga, Latvia, and together with a cup of swimmers my husband delivered, we made 16 embryos, of which 13 survived. One of those was placed in the womb of our friend, and we were sort of expecting, waiting if it would stick. It did not. Our first attempt had failed. A setback, but nothing more than a setback. I'm strong, healthy, fertile. I'm just missing my uterus. But instead of a uterus, I have a, a, a great dose of dut, guts, persistence, and a great family to support me. And that combination empowers me and gives me stamina. My husband and I will follow our dreams with the opportunities that arise, as long as they're not asking too much of the family we already have and values of life. I'm 28 years old. I would have been able to get pregnant for at least 15 years. Who knows what happens in that period of time? Those 12 embryos that we have left in, in the laboratory in Riga are safe there. So why should we give up already? We have 12 potential lives waiting for a uterus. Maybe another try with surrogacy? Or what about uterus transplantation? I was planning to talk to you about the Swedish uterus transplantations planned for the spring of 2012. But about a month ago, I was pointed at a press release that a so far successful transplant was performed by doctors in Turkey last August. Technology is developing faster than I could prepare my TED talk. So why should we give up our dreams when technology is promising such great opportunities in the near future? And maybe this technology is something for us too. We've been invited to come over to the hospital in Antalya to, ask, uh, to talk to the doctors and to meet Deria, the woman who received the first transplant. And maybe if the doctors think they can help us and if it feels like the right thing for our family, why not? Maybe there's something for our future, too. By following my dreams and being persistent, I'm not only hoping to get what I'm dreaming of, but also uh, change to help changing the world for, for generations of women to come. All the steps that we've taken on this never-chosen path have brought us feelings of joy, of hope, of pain and of despair, it has taught us new things about who we are and what, we're, what, what values most in life. That our path is an unconventional one and a tough one at times, we know by now. That most people we meet have strong feelings about what we're trying to do is also something we've learned. But in all this, we have found each other, we have grown, and we hope we can accomplish the unaccomplishable. 
while staying true to our values of life. I feel extremely, extremely lucky to have such a great family around me to follow me on this path. You're looking at the story, you just heard the story of a very lucky woman. Thank you.